All right, I guess we'll get this um, going. So I'm absolutely not Claudia, but um, she couldn't make it here today, but she's pre-recorded a video for us. So I'm just going to do an intro for her. So um, Claudia is the CEO of Nutriblox Limited uh, and has a PhD in human nutrition and is a reg registered nutritionist. Uh, she's a lecturer at Polytechnic and outside of work, she's a passionate about using digital technologies to make nutrition education uh, accessible to children all around Aotearoa. Um, she co-founded Nutriblox in December of 2019 with Dr. Veronica Vesaprucha. I, my apologies if I mispronounced that. Um, an academic in computer science. Uh, Nutriblox is an ed tech company that develops engaging, entertaining, and educa educational games for health. So uh, without further ado, here is Claudia. Kia ora, I'm Claudia, CEO of Nutriblox, and I'm really excited to be able to have this opportunity to share with you my story and experience on the topic, can serious games be fun? I'm gutted that I'm not able to join you in person, but if you're interested in this topic, do email me or contact me, and I would love to have a chat with you. Kia ora, ke hinga pori, oti poti, otautahi ahau e noho ana, ko leong latima o tu whanau, ko Claudia toku inua, Hey Kayako Ahau Ki Ara Institute of Canterbury. Hey Director Ahau Ki Nutriblocks Limited. Norera Tenakoto Tenakoto Kinakoto Katwa. I was born in Singapore and for my undergrad and postgraduate studies, I was in the Nidern and then I moved to um, Christchurch, Otataki, for my current job at Ara Institute of Canterbury. In 2020, founded um, Nutribox and in 2021, got married and got my surname, Latima. So that's just a little bit about myself. Just start off, start off with a disclaimer that the information shared is based on my personal story and experience and not representative of any companies. Through my story, I hope to share with you about three tips on collaborations, two tips on prototyping, and one tip on finding the fun factor on this topic on whether serious games can be fun. So join me as I share with you how it all started. As I reflect back on how this all started, I think that it started when I completed my PhD. So my PhD was looking at the gut microbiota in infants and young children and how it affects health. What I found in my PhD was that children who ate more fruits and vegetables had a greater variety of gut bacteria and this led to positive health outcomes. So we know that lots of children are not meeting the guidelines of eating at least five plus a day of fruits and vegetables. But how can we change this behavior? How can we make children eat more fruits and vegetables? That's the hard question. So during my PhD, I was doing more basic research and I was more interested in looking at how we can apply this knowledge and do a study to help change behaviors. So how can we change the behavior of children to encourage them to eat more fruits and vegetables? And around the same time, I, also, I was also thinking about like the people around me. So the farm city, I put it there as it was a game that my dad really liked playing. He usually don't you play um, video games or mobile games. But recently, when he started playing this video game, he seems to be so addicted to it always constantly on 
the phone, constantly playing this game. So this is kind of like a behavior change without the person knowing about it. And then another example would be, for example, Fortnite. So some teachers talk about how when they notice that nowadays the children, especially the boys, who used to be quite shy in dance classes or physical activity classes, now they are more willing to perform or do activities like dance activities because of showing off the moves that they learn or that they see in Fortnite. So that got me thinking, can video games change behaviors? Can we use video games to encourage or promote children to eat more fruits and vegetables? And the last game picture there, Warrior Match, is a game that I play. And I find that when I play before I sleep, it kind of helps me to sleep better. So here comes the tip, first collaboration tip, which is to find out what you do not know. So kind of got into this initial idea of using video games for um, encouraging nutrition, promoting healthy eating behaviors. But what I do not know is all about this game design, building a game, creating a game. So what I did was I tried to find out what I do not know, tended um, set in on computer game design, the course 360 at the University of Otago, took up some online courses looking at story, narrative development for video games, and also listened to this um, like audiobook, which I thought I found quite useful, which was looking at um, actionable gamification by Yu Kai Chao. So all this other information helped me to um, inform me what I did not know so that I could maybe find people and ask questions to find out more information about how to make video games. And this leads on to the second collaboration tip, which is to attend lots of events, network and ask lots of questions. Initially, when I first attended the Dunedin Game Developers Meetup, I felt really out of place as I was probably one of the only non-artist, non-game developer, non-game programmer there, or non-computer person. But attending all these events were really helpful as I got to meet lots of game developers, artists, and some of the first few people that I started working with in the team came from these meetups, like meeting them in person and getting to know them. So the meetup picture shows like events that were organized, for example, um, talks from lawyers about game development and doing startups. And I also found that attending, um, taking part in like, for example, Audacious and the distiller from Startup Dunedin really helped me to get this idea going into forming it into like a startup, making this idea come, um, come to play. So making it happen. What really helped was I realized that Everyone was really friendly. Like I just shared my idea, shared what I think I was going to do, and then asked lots of questions. Asked, and everyone was able to um, direct me to someone who could answer my question, and or if they weren't able to answer my question at that point of time, they said, you know, like contact them, email them and find the time to meet up, to discuss. And it was all, through all this networking that leads me to my third collaboration tip, which is to find someone who has the same values and vision, but different expertise from you to set up your company or to work on this idea together. And for me, that is Dr. Veronica Lysaputra, 
who has a PhD in computer science. After talking to her, we found out that we have really the same values and vision. She had created a game looking at um, teaching children about diabetes. And importantly, we could also really, I guess, what, what do you say, click really well. We understood what we each want from the company. And we all, we both had the same direction for the game. So now after forming the company comes the second stage, which is developing the game. So very importantly, we need to do lots and lots of prototyping. Prototyping tip number one, conduct focus groups. So we want to um, have a fun factor to this educational games or serious games. So how do we find the fun factor? We ask, we ask our audience, we ask our players, target players, what they think if it's fun. So what we did was to do focus groups, carry out focus groups with children of our target um, player age group. So that would be about seven to 11 years old. We asked them what kind of game characters that they like, for example, what kind of game team that they like. And this helped us to develop the characters, develop the game, design in the first place. So this is what we call a participatory approach where we get the players to participate in this game design process. So as we were talking to children, we use um, pictures of different um, children games out there to get the children to discuss in groups on what they think about the different characters, different teams, etc. Then going on to prototyping tip number two, which is play testing or pilot testing. So once we got the results from the focus group, we design a draft game, design and did lots of play testing with the children. The play testing for us was looking more about the game mechanics, the engagement, the fun factor of the game. At a later stage, we did pilot testing. So we did pilot testing to find out whether the game meets the educational outcomes and whether does the game entertain and engage the players. To do pilot testing, we um, carry out the study or this like, mini pilot test on a group of students from a different school from our playtesting um, children. We asked them some questions about nutrition before they played the game and after four weeks of playing the game, we asked them more questions after to see whether they learned this, um, the nutrition outcomes that we have for each part of the game. We also ask questions about game design and the game fun factor so that we are able to look at the results to determine whether our game is fun. As you can see, we did play testing and pilot testing in a classroom environment. And that is because we aim to have the game to be played during uh, in class. So we have a um, curriculum, a lesson plan attached to it, where the teachers are able to um, look at some nutrition resources, explain a bit about the nutrition resources, children, the children play the game for about maybe 20 minutes. And then after that, the teacher carry out an in-class activity to reinforce this knowledge. This play testing and pilot testing is very important because we were able to find out what um, parts of the game engage the um, children the most, what parts that they found maybe 
challenging or took a long time or hard time to um, overcome or complete that challenge? Or is it maybe some children found it too easy? So we carry out also the playtesting with different age groups and this enable us to find out which, whether we need to make the game or the resources a bit harder or easier for the different age groups. Through this playtesting on pilot testing, we're also able to talk to the teachers to get their feedback on what they think about having this nutrition game included into their curriculum. As we were able to be in person to observe how the children play and ask them questions, we we're also able to find out what they found fun and how engaged they were looking at their body language, their responses to the game and how they play the game. And this leads to a summary of uh, the fun fact tip, which is a train one tip, which is to research, ask questions and test it out. So one of the questions to ask about how, why children find games fun will be also looking at the game player types. So doing some research, looking at the game player types, it's interesting to see that for children, looking at this age between 7 to 11 years old, there isn't too much of a difference in the game player types for females or for males. They all seem to have a bit of achiever player type, explorer, socializer, and killer player type. Perhaps for the males, you can see a bit more of the yellow, which is the killer player type but it's not too different. So this makes our game design quite interesting because for a serious game, we want an educational outcome. So we want the children to learn about nutrition, but we want to engage them so that they'll, con they'll want to play the game to learn about nutrition. So looking at the game player types, we try and incorporate different elements or game mechanics into the game that can cater to the different game player types that we see. Also, looking at the nutrition or the content part of the game, we found that children do know what is a healthy or unhealthy food, but they do not really know the function of nutrients or why they should be eating certain foods. So that led us to create or design a game that focuses on what is in your food, so what nutrients are in your food, and also how would the nutrients help you for your health. On the right, you can see some screenshots of the very, very first prototype game. And um, on the next slide, I'll show you how different the game is now. But what we did find through asking questions and playtesting, so testing this out, was that children do like characters, so they like different skins, they like to have challenges, and they like to explore, they like mini games, they like getting rewards. And they like a variety in the games that they play. So like something like mini games. So these were the things that made games fun for the children. So we tried to incorporate what we found from this play testing, this research, and asking all these children all these questions. So this leads us to the game that we are currently developing, Nutri Islands which is as if when you see later, really different. It's the year 2080 and everyone... Good morning.
So you can see we tried to include in mini games, make the game a bit challenging for some who like challenges. We included different outfits that, um, so rewards that the children can change for outfits. And we gave them an area where they could explore. It's the year so if you have to have a tryout everyone. of the first level Good of our morning. game, Neutral Alliance Islands, for free, do give us some feedback on how to improve. So we would love for you to have a play on a game, test it out, and give us any feedback. All this is made possible through an awesome team that we have. So we'd like to thank also AWS for the NZ GDC 22 scholarship. And do follow us on Twitter at NutriBlocks. And please do contact me if you're interested in this area. We'd love to have a chat with you on your thoughts. A very big thank you also to our community collaborators the different schools that we did play testing and pilot testing, Spot Canterbury, and all this is made possible through funding from Code and the support that is provided through business mentors from the different organizations. Thank you for your time and please do let me know if you have any questions. So we do have Claudia um, live streaming in at the moment. So if anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to put them through the app or otherwise, um, is it a mic that we want to pass around? Yeah, we'll hear off the room microphone Oh yeah, as well. you can just um, speak loudly and we'll get it off the room microphone. So um, do we have any questions? <laughs> I can't tell if you're waving or putting your hands up. <laughs> microphone. Yep, uh, question there. You wrote a paper. Where is it published? Oh, it's published in the Journal of um, Nutrition, Education, and Behavior Change. I can. Um, do you all get the slides? If not, I can. If you email me, I can send you the paper. The there's a link to the paper under the reference. If you get the slides, if not, you can email me, and I'll send you the paper. It's um. I guess I did it when I was more doing um, like academic, like um, it's like an academic journal. So it's um, peer reviewed and like by, the, by other academics in that area. Yeah, the um, slides will be available on the NZ GDA web, um, not website, well, yes, website, um, YouTube um, in a couple of months. So um, the slides will be available then too. Thank you. Will the game be coming out and on what platform? Yes, so we hope to have our pre-launch in September. So we are um, planning to, we have a booth at the New Zealand Principals Federation Conference in Christchurch. So we hope to do a kind of a like soft launch there with the principals, with the schools, and hopefully get a couple of schools to sign up for the uh, free trial and um, get some feedback from them and do some um, edits and maybe launch it uh, next year, early next year, hopefully. Yeah, it's also available to play at the Kiwi Interactive Showcase, which is on level two at Tapapa. So highly recommend you go check it out. Yes. Anyone else for questions? Uh, yes, in the back. Oh yes, um, so so far we have mainly done play testing and pilot testing with um, schools, so with teachers, we haven't really done too much with parents. So, but that's a good point, we could maybe have a look at that. Because I guess um, like looking at the customer target audience, we are trying to target schools first, and parents are just probably a nice, nice to have. Yeah. Any more questions in the audience? Or I'll also check the app. 
just in case. We got some sneaky ones coming through. No, it looks like we're good then. I'll give you five more seconds. Right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you so much for attending. And thank you, Claudia, for an excellent talk. I think everyone um, really appreciated it. And also go check out our game at the Kiwi Interactive Showcase. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Nice to see you. See you. Bye.